Well, this month, we're talking about mobility changes, functional mobility changes, the movement system. And the movement system, although it seems like it should be pretty self-explanatory, it's about moving, it actually turns out it's pretty complicated. And it's so much a part of who we are that we can often identify people simply by watching them move. Uh, watch how they do things. We could have a silhouette and still possibly notice things about someone. But the question is, do we notice when they're starting to change? And how early does that happen when somebody's brain is changing with something like a delirium or a depression or an anxiety or a dementia? And what about the different dementias? And it turns out if we were to look very carefully at mobility behaviors, looking at how people get around, how people transition from one space and place and, and situation to another, it might give us a lot of information about, hmm, well, they're changing and they're adapting and hmm, they're changing and they're compensating. Or, Hmm, they're changing and it seems like they're getting more risky, like they're missing pieces of transitions. And unfortunately, what tends to happen is we don't notice these things until they have exhibited risk. They may be the first person, the person living with the condition is the first one to notice, wow, man, I almost took a header there or, oh, crap, I'm hitting my head on something fairly often. Oh, or maybe it's, oh, jeez, I'm having to correct because things are surprising me when I move or things are surprising me when I go to move or people around me are surprising me when they move. Now, we're going to spend some time talking about some of these places and spaces we might want to hmm, get a baseline on. So I'm going to bring up one that we talk about as a challenge in order to make a change. And that's frankly, community mobility issues. So how do you get from where you spend your intimate and personal time to maybe where you do things like volunteer or work? How about you get from the volunteer and workplace to where you gather things in order to go back to your place? How do you get and handle doing things like making sure you have the right fuel and the right food and the right, you know, there's so many pieces to mobility. So what I'm talking about is driving or using public transportation or being a passenger or in other words, it's sort of leaving your place of residence, exiting. So you have to deal with the exiting, going into the outside world, then you have an immediate neighborhood or an area that outside the home, that home base, you have to navigate and negotiate. And then you have a vehicle of some sort, often, that you have transport from one space to another. And how much you own and do that and how much maybe somebody else provides that and you're along for the ride. But then you have to make sure that you've made the arrangements for those things to happen and how much those are what they've always been and how much you've had to change because you've changed where you live, you change who you live with, you change what the resources are, you change something and it may have nothing to do with you or it may have a lot to do with you depending on what it is. You get a new car and it has lots of techie things. Oh, you decide that you're going to bike more because you think it's good for you and it it it's, it's fun. You enjoy it. So you start to use your bike more than just for exercise. You're actually doing it for mobility. Or maybe you're using something outside your house to maintain the property. So you may be lawn mowing or pushing a grocery cart. I mean, there are so many places that we do things and we do them in so many unique and novel ways. And yet there's often something familiar and comfortable about it. And for everything we do, there's a transition in and a transition out, like getting in the car, starting the car, driving the car, and then parking the car, and then exiting the car, and then 
then having stuff you're bringing back in. So, I mean, it's this, you could pick any activity, taking a bus, do I prep? Do I plan? Do I do that? But then we're really this month focusing in on the physicality of doing things, but we can't leave out the brain because frankly, it's part of this. And so when my habit structures, my routines, my rituals, my patterns are different, how well do I adapt? How flexible am I? How much reserve do I have and how well do I handle that? And if I notice that something isn't comfortable, how much am I able to start to work on it and practice it so it gets comfortable? And what's my lifelong pattern of that? So one of our tricky parts is we often just keep thinking, well, you know, she's getting a little older. Well, you know, she had that problem with her back. Well, and so we tend to allow things to build up and not notice things for a while. And this is particularly, we don't worry about driving until we notice things about driving that we're worried about. Instead of having a routine pattern of, we just check it, we just check it, we just check it. And one of the reasons is it's time consuming. And in order to present enough different kind of options, you're really talking about, is it a screening or is it an evaluation? Because what are the critical things I want to look at? Well, in fact, we don't classically do anything. Um, even when you have multiple accidents or you're getting several sort of warnings or tickets, we tend to think about it as just, eh, well, that happens versus has it ever happened to this person before? Is this like a familiar pattern with the same intensity, frequency, and, or is this starting, I mean, is this a little different? Is this getting more and more different? Um, have they noticed? Are they trying to respond to it? Could they use some support in responding to it? Is it emotionally distressing to them to have this happening? Or does it seem like, and sometimes it's, we start to realize, well, I'm getting older and it's like, yeah, but what are you doing to sustain the pattern that you like, the way that you do it? Are there things you can do in other ways, in other ways or other words, becoming proactive in your mobility? Uh, or are there changes within your own system that are making it really imperative that you start modifying what you've done? And it could be due to eyesight or it could be due to an inner ear issue like you know, balance or a condition that you have, or it could be due to physiological things like having had um, a stroke or having had a condition like COVID that really took a lot out of you and maybe you're recovering. So the idea that we would have people support us and help us, but recognizing sometimes you have to recognize what's going on to do that. Now, community mobility is more than driving and it's more than catching a bus or even using Uber. It's like once you get somewhere, having the endurance and flexibility and to do what you do when you go somewhere and then getting back. Remember, it's all about this complex nature. So then let's move out of leaving the home and let's talk about even in the home, where you live, where you spend your time, getting around in that space. What are you noticing? What are you noticing about your, your physiology? What are you noticing about your abilities? What are you noticing about uh-ohs and ahas? Uh and how many times are you doing things? And oh boy, during this last year and a half, many of us realized, wow, it's harder to stay fit when you are more in this space and not going other places and not being among other people. And now starting to reprogram to move back out is sort of like we're going, hmm. So looking at what kind of programs and offerings and options there are and making sure that when we're building back, we're building back in small enough bites that we don't overwhelm ourselves and we don't overwhelm the people we care about. And we start getting into new routines that enhance and support and encourage mobility, functional mobility, more than just walking. Oh, did you hear me say that? It's more than just walking. It is walking sort of on uneven surfaces. It's stair climbing. It's sit to stand. It's down to the ground and back up. It's leaning over and reaching up. And it's doing whatever in life you might be called upon to do and you might want to do. 
It's carrying while you move. It's it's reaching while you're standing. I mean, it's noticing something and wanting to do something about it. Thinking about yourself, are you a risk taker? Are you a safety seeker? Are you somebody who would raise your hand and say, I think I need help versus, yeah, yeah, I think I'll try it on my own. And how long has it been since? So I'm not saying all this to worry people. What I'm trying to get us to do is get smarter about this so that when something happens, we aren't caught off guard because we do know that loss of mobility skills is a huge issue. And when we talk about dementia, noticing some things about mobility might actually help us identify what form, what type, how much involvement from this and how much on that. We might notice things uneven down the middle. We know that dementia tends to be more uneven down the middle than it is even across the board. But that can also be something that might be an indicator of, ooh, noticing more about mobility issues might cause me to think maybe, maybe we should look at Lewy body disease versus frontal temporal dementia. Maybe I should look at something related to ALS versus maybe I should, maybe I should be curious about what in the past, tell me how, you know. So what I'm actually suggesting this month and what I'm actually suggesting in general is our brains are these amazing structures. And then you have the cerebellum, the little brain. And then you have the complex wiring that goes from the sensory motor to the eyes and to the inner ear for vestibular balance. And this amazing thing that we do that's left, right, integrated, upper body, lower body movement, rotational patterns using these things at the end of our extremities called hands or fingers, but also using things down at the bottom of our bodies called feet and toes and soles. Um, so recognizing changes in movement patterns, sometimes looking back on a video of yourself can be quite alerting, or it could be alarming when you <laughs> It all depends. But what we may want to be better at is recognizing, hmm, you know what? I think there are some shifts in certain ways. And what are we going to do about that? And the first place we should always look before we start pointing out somebody else is ourselves and see what we want to do about quick movements, slow movements, sustained movements, sudden movements. Um, what do we want to do and what can we do and who do we want to do it with and when are we going to do it? and How could we get that going? Ooh, yeah, there's a lot to it. But then again, quite frankly, it's what human beings do to live in the world. So for this session, take a look in the mirror and then maybe watch yourself on video if you have some. Unfortunately, I have quite a bit. And if not, Maybe ask a friend, what have they noticed, if anything? And if nobody's noticing, maybe it's time to take a look because there's no use in losing ability when you didn't even know. Anyhow, that's how I look at it. So when we suspect that somebody has something going on, get curious. When we know somebody has something going on, be supportive. And it doesn't always mean compensate. It could mean let's create a little bit of a challenge, but make it a good challenge. Something that's enjoyable or exciting or brings out that, that spirit of, how about we try? There are so many people and so many options, but we'll only do something if we get started. So challenge yourself. I think I have a bike that's looking for my name or me. It's probably not looking for me. I'll go look for it. Or maybe I'll take a run or maybe I'll do the steps. There's a whole set of them out there and I don't have to go out where it's hot. Hmm. Options. Maybe I should at least try one and find out. Till next time. Take care with care. Hey folks, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe to help us spread Teach's positive approach message around the world. 
And don't forget to click the bell to get notified when new videos are posted.